Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika in with tonight's episode of the Have and Have Not Season 6, Episode 8, entitled Enough. And, child, we're going to jump right on into it because I got another video I want to do today. Um, Baby, Hannah and Candace beat Jim Taylor all the way up, okay? They, they, you know, stomped him a little bit. Then Hannah grabs the phone to call the police to report what Jim had done to Benny. But Candace reminded her they in his house. So, you know, you'd think Jim would kind of shut up and let, let her get her mama calm so they could leave. No, he antagonizing more and more. Baby, Hannah swore to God, Diane, the maid, Jim, and Candace, if Jim come near and one of her kids again, she was going to kill him. That's a guarantee. Catherine came home wanting to know what was going on and why Candace was in her house. So Hannah told her. Jim tried to tell Catherine to shut, you know, shut the F up again, okay? She shut him down. She said that $8 million don't belong to you, Jim, and she cares not how Jim feels about it. She still feel, Jim still felt empowered, empowered to threaten Candace to return his money or else. Then Katie told him to go upstairs and change his clothes. She said she the person who had been holding him by the balls all these years, and she about ready to cut them out because he asked her who she thought she was. Child, he finally went, and then Candace tells Hannah that you see how they feel for you. And I didn't like that because Catherine has been nothing but nice to Hannah. She has offered her many of things. Hannah chooses to still live like a slave. She don't realize that through Catherine, she receives her 40 acres and her mule catch, okay? Well, child, she tried to she tried to get uh, Hannah to stay there, but Hannah is so mad, she told her, I got to get out of this house. But she promised Catherine the same thing she promised Jim. If any harm come to my aid, she promised it wouldn't. Catherine said it wasn't going to happen. Now, outside, Benny and Mitch then arrived, and uh, they asked him what happened. Hannah and Candace both said at the same time, beating some ass, baby. <laughs> so Hannah, I'm so mad. She don't even want to get in no car with nobody. She just walks off. She got to walk that anger off. That's that big man. That, that's that mama bird man. That's that kind that really should be scared of, to be honest with you. Anyway, Benny tell Candace, Candace, you still talking about this money? That ain't your money. He said, I done got hurt. Your baby did. He put that picture of that baby in her face. And baby, she had to face some stuff. She didn't want to. Then here comes Jim out on the back and threatening them, talking about they need to leave. Mitch was finally able to get Benny to get in the car because see, Jim was being nasty. He was talking about her, his mama and his sister again. So to keep down the fight and keep Benny from messing up his stitches, Mitch got him on in the car. And then Catherine told Jim, bring your ass in the house. Now, Jim really don't feel no fear at this time. He coming to the house. Jim threatening Catherine not to return to that hotel because he says she reeked him in. She says she don't give a damn because uh she didn't have to deal with him coming home smelling like prostitutes most of their marriage. Um, he She scolded him and told him he was wrong to go after Benny, and he better not do it again. Jim said it is what it is. He asked her, why are you so apt to try to protect this woman? You act like that's your mama. And that is when Catherine revealed to her husband something he had not known. Hannah helped me through my cancer. Now, ain't that says a whole lot. He had no clue his own wife had cancer. He still couldn't understand why she he uh she always protecting and trying to give Hannah stuff. He said, just because she nursed you back to health, that's not worth no $8 million. She warned him that I'll give her even more than that. And he told her you would be stupid. Then he said something that let me know that he ain't got no soul nowhere up inside of him. That man told that woman, you say she helped, she nursed you back to health and you were about to die. She said, yeah. He said, yet another reason why I don't like her now. Baby, it's a special place in hell. David arrived home to Madison sitting out in the front. He said no one answered the doorbell, and David found it strange because Jeffrey was supposed to be there. He asked uh, Madison, do you know where he is? Of course, Madison lied and said no. Jeffrey was still down to the hospital checking on L crazy. Instead of him leaving, he stayed at the hospital, just telling him when he come back to his room that there's a possibility that he can go home that day. Jeffrey was glad to hear that. Then Justin started begging him to come see this apartment that he supposedly got for him and Jeffrey. 
He said he will come the next day, but all he can do today is drop him off. So then he wants to ask him, well, where were you when you walked out of here? I was in the cafeteria. He said, were you talking to Madison? He said, no. Then he tells Justin, he and Madison are nothing. He said Madison liked him at one point, but he wasn't feeling it. And then he leaves out the room to go see if Justin going to be released that day. Uh, I don't know if Jeffrey got Stockholm Syndrome or he just crazy much like his mama. But he keeps wanting to play with fire and I hope he don't get big burned like his daddy. Now down to the jail, D.A. George comes in. Why you still want to fix? So he sends a doctor in to check on Wyatt and to give him a pill to help him wean off of drugs. That ain't what he wanted. He want heroin. That man told him, we cannot give you no illegal substances down here. Now, this pill is strong, and it will help you detox. Why he wasn't receptive to it at first until D.A. George said, well, we can just take you back to the cell. Baby, he hurried up and got some act right. He agreed to take that pill. George is not certain he calm enough, so he asked his assistant to go ask for a recess. But why he still want to talk? George said, no, I want to wait and let that pill take effect. So George says, Wyatt, Wyatt, he tells him, you're going to have to be calm before we do this, okay? So take the pill, take your pill. Now back at David's, uh, Madison is changing his bandages, bandages and telling him that his wounds, are, his wounds are healing nicely, right? David asks Madison to call Jeffrey. Then Veronica pulled up. Madison asks, well, should I call the police because that's your ex-wife? He said, no, call Jeffrey, and then he goes to let Veronica in. She came to say that she thought about what David said, and she would like to try to make their relationship work again, too. She said she do love Jake David, but she was enraged. He apologized for it all. She said she's going to stop drinking. He said good, and then she asked if he could ever forgive her, and he said, yeah, I already did, and he told her he loved her. David suggests they start slow by just, like, dating like they did back in college, and she was all for it. I said, mm, at least that's what it seemed like. See, I, again, I can't trust this. I don't know. I know David full of stuff because he trying to get her. But is she falling for the okie doke? I don't know. I hope she is. She so doggone me, uh, throwed off. She goes to hug the man. Forgot that you just burnt the man up a couple weeks ago. He winced but told her it was okay. She wanted to see the bandages, but he told her his nurse had just changed him. Did you see that look on her face when he changed? Oh, you have a nurse? Oh, well, I might as well meet her now. He said some male nurse and called Madison down. Child, she was getting ready to tell Madison his services was no longer needed. When David told him, I like Madison, and I was lucky to get him. So she says, well, you're right. Okay, pick your battles wisely. She backed down. Then Jeffrey come home shocked to see Veronica in their house. David tells Ver uh, Jim, uh, Jeffrey, your mama just stopped by. Why? He said, well, we're we working on getting back together. And they, and Jeffrey just could not believe it. Child, I can't believe it either. But um, she decides to go on and leave and, and let Jeffrey and David talk a little bit. Jeffrey wanted to know as soon as she was out the door what was going on. That woman can't be trusted. She tried to kill you. David ain't giving him the 411. Just ask him to be cool and let him handle his mama. And he went on upstairs. Madison then says to Jeffrey, now I see why uh, you went to visit Justin in the hospital. You get it from them. Jeffrey warned him just do his job, and Madison said, no problem. Madison let him know, and by the way, I didn't tell uh, your dad that you went to visit Justin. I know better. Now back at the hotel, Broderick comes up to Candace, who's sitting in the lobby, full of thought and crying. She needs a new plan, according to her. A plan that would include R.K. and Gia. That threw me. I thought Jill was undercover and she had blown her cover to Jim. So she's still hooking on the cover, y'all. Hmm. Broderick can tell something off with Candace and she says nothing but uh, she just need him to get every video and every picture he has of Catherine Cryer. And he agrees to do it. Then he offers her a stiff drink which she accepts. Goes it down in fact and then she wanted another one. Child, he obliged her, and uh, she decided to get up and leave, but then here comes the Secret Service Brigade coming through, so she kind of turned her back because she didn't want to be seen. She don't want to deal with Obama Jr., right? But Landon saw and came up and wanted to have a little chit-chat with her, right? Landon could tell that she had been crying, and you know Candace plays like she's so hard, you know, so he gets her to at least talk. 
She don't want to talk about Obama Jr., but Landon shares with her that, look, Charles told me about you crying up in the bathroom. And um, he wanted me to offer you help. You know she is a black woman, and, and what, what happens every time we offer somebody in our community oftentimes help? She automatically starts saying, I'm not crazy. It ain't about being crazy. It's about getting the help that you need. I think Benny asking if she cared about him or her child forced her to look at her, look into herself and her feelings because she knows that she caused a lot of harm, including the death of her own son behind her being money hungry. Now, I want to trust Candace, but she like Veronica, like I said, y'all. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, ain't nobody got time for the bamboozling. Landon get her into a room where she can cry, basically, and then, you know, she had embarrassed at being what she considered to be weak. He, she was about to lose it. Child, he coaching her to breathe, and then Obama Jr. shows up, and she says, um, that's who you was texting. He said, actually, he texted my assistant. I'm not allowed a smartphone. She trying to act like she okay, but she's not because she admitted she can't even sleep at night. She admits that all she sees when she closes her eyes is him in that suit and that casket. She begins to apologize for what she did to him and her son. He understood and told her, Candace, we are a lot more alike than what you know, and maybe one day I'll be able to share that with you. He asked her if she was tired, and she said yes. He said, I too was once tired, and it led me to this presidency. Now I'm offering to you. She tells him, you know what, I just can't be hurt again. He said, me neither. He asked her to try one more time because he's the guy she been waiting for. And she didn't say yes, but she didn't say no neither. She hugged him. So we're going to see what's going to happen with her in that situation. Y'all get down in the panic section and let me know your thoughts and opinions about tonight's episode of the Have and the Have Nots. I will be back uh, later on in the week with trending topics and any other reviews that I do for the week. I will have them out. Um, I have them out. I have them out for you and we can get on it, okay? See y'all on the next video. Peace.